a boy and his dog. Rather, a, a, a retired Navy SEAL and his dog. Growing up in Waterloo, Iowa, Mike Ritlin was raised with a love for dogs. His first, a black lab named Bud. Uh, I always marveled at, at their physical attributes and being able to use their nose, be it to find ducks early on or uh, just using their nose to track animals. That passion for the animal followed Ritlin into his military career. Always fascinated by service canines, what this elite military professional calls his light switch moment happened when he and his SEAL team members were in Iraq during the fall of Saddam Hussein. There was a Marine group that had a dog with them, mm -hmm. and there was basically a cave complex, uh, or you know, an opening to a mm -hmm. cave, and the dog went uh, was that was ahead of the group, and um, he found uh, a series of grenade booby traps right inside the doorway, and uh, you know, typically these guys would have just rushed right in and assaulted underneath and. Uh, had that dog not been there, without a doubt, you know, the first couple of guys would have been either killed or, or severely wounded. Ritland knew he'd found his calling. The SEAL was from then on tethered to Special Operations Canines. These pictures from his book, Trident Canine Warriors. There's not a, a lot that they can't do, honestly. The, the primary focus is for them to be an explosive detection dog, so, uh, you know, they go uh, typically out out in front of everybody else and uh, and clear the way in terms of IEDs or caches or uh, you know anything that, that could be of uh, of a threatening nature to any of our guys. The training of these animals to earn the right to fight alongside our country's most elite Close. is astounding. Like your two-legged seal counterparts, it takes years. Fast roping, parachuting from planes, swimming, boarding helicopters headed for harm's way. They have to be even keeled and social enough to pile into a helicopter at night with 30 other guys, you know, while things are blowing up and, you know, it's, it's mad chaos and, and everything. And that dog has to has to be clear headed and confident enough to know these are the good guys, those are the bad guys, all this chaos is happening. Uh, you know, and that's where training and genetics and, and everything has to has to mesh and, and come into, uh, you know, the perfect storm. That's why these special ops canines are at the top of the food chain when it comes to four legged warriors. There's so many different things that we expect and ask of these dogs to do over there. Um, and to get all of that into one dog is just very, very rare. After leaving his SEAL career, Ritland started Tricos in rural Delta County, training the very dogs he and his SEAL comrades relied on then and now. We've uh, had dogs go to just about every different federal agency, um, you know, Customs, Border Patrol, TSA, DHS. Uh, military groups, police departments, uh, but then we also do, you know, personal protection dogs that end up in, in homes all over all over the world. But this East Texan by choice is proudest of his dog's presence on the front lines. Uh, to me it speaks volumes that our, our most elite soldiers use these dogs to protect them. Ritland's resume, written in bold caps of his love of country, family, and canine. To have dogs go to units that are going uh, abroad and, and protecting our boys downrange is, uh, to me, it doesn't get any better than that. You know, it's a, it's a feeling of, of continued service. And, and to me, I, I've spent, you know, the overwhelming majority of my adult life in that capacity. And so to be able to continue to do that and do what I love, you know, and be here with, with the family is pretty tough to beat.